livelihood. All sunk in a matter of minutes while we could do nothing but look on. Well, we were merchants what seems like a moment ago. With our ships sunk, we're a little more than three men with nothing more to say than boo. These damn orcs. They can't keep off this place for the life of them. They came in here slinging fireballs and swinging swords. Wasn't a thing we could do to defend ourselves. That was a right stunning show of magic you pulled, it was. Wish you'd have been around when our own barge went down in flames. With our ship gone, nothing for it but to get a job. Slim pickings around here, that's for sure. Maybe you can keep an eye out, though. Ahoy, sailor! Are you enjoying the fresh winds of Sicil? Name's Conrad. Cargo trader, sea captain, an expert in all things nautical. Folks across Andervale know to give old Conrad a holler when it comes to rare imports and magical items. Aye, that Cecil's worse than a rooster, crowing all around town about matters he ought to know I better kept quiet. Well, if you know about the staff, I suppose you also know it's gone without a trace. For my part, I haven't a clue where it could have gone. Overboard, stolen, or vanished into thin air. Though I'm quite eager to see it return, I've got a reputation to uphold, you know. Wouldn't hurt to ask some of my men. I tried myself, but sailors tend to be a bit tight-lipped when they're afraid of getting one another in some trouble. Seaman's code, you know. Not to rat out a fellow sailor. Those orcs must be out of their barbarous minds launching an attack on a city where a great wizard resides. Though even I must admit they put up a hearty effort. I'll tell you, the only time I'd consider waging a suicide campaign like that would be if whatever I sought was something worth dying over. Sauce? Here in Sicil? Dow! Of all that cursed hunks of rock to land on, Conrad chooses this one. Now that you mention it, I noticed Dietmar, a fellow merchant travelling with us, carrying a sealed box off the ship during the attack. At the time, I figured he was just escaping with his personal effects. But it could well have been that staff you're talking about. Well, sure, I saw him slip off the ship, but I haven't a clue where he could possibly be now. Captain Conrad's the man to ask for such matters. You call to Woolgraf. He awaits your queries. With a simple nod, the rogue seems to say, Shoot! Woolgraf sighs and pulls parchment parts out of his pockets. He opts for the largest one he can find and sits down, pen in hand. When I was a kid, friends and I used to play sauce hunters. Neighbour's dog was the sorcerer. Good fun. One day, we saw strangers in the forest. They looked dodgy. Dark robes, big knives. Friends fled, but I followed them. I took a man into a cave, cut his throat, held him over a blue stone. Blood turned it into ruby. I warned the sauce hunters in the city, caught the cutthroats. Sauce hunters called me a hero. Bad guys were hung. I witnessed the hanging. Sorcerer spoke a spell before the trap door opened. I was mute, just like that. Always wanted to be a sauce hunter, but sauce hunters didn't want no mutiny order. Can't blame them. Too bad, though. Too bad. Walgraf frowns and signals you to hold on for an instant. He begins to write and gives you a scrap of paper. Not easy being mute. Can't talk and folks think you're slow in the head. No one ever gave me work, though I'm good with my hands. Was poor. Got hungry. Got thirsty. Stole stuff. Then got greedy. Became a cat burglar. Told you, I'm good with my hands. Would have done honest work with them, given the chance. A long time ago. I ain't bitter about it, though. Like the rogue's life. Freedom. <laughs> Unless the law gets you. Haven't yet. Too nimble. Too good. Born for adventure. The rogue smiles broadly and dramatically produces the quill in question. He holds it aloft for all to admire, then jots down the following words. Saw a wizard once in the village up north. Hunter's Edge. Wizard had nifty things. Brooms that sweep by themselves. Big star viewer in the garden. Went into his house by night. Found Quill by spell books. Kept it. Never needed ink no more. Hands used to be black as chimney sweeps. Clean now. 
Clean of ink, that is, not of thievery. Mine's got a wheat after all. What are ye staring at? Some poor chaps lost their ship and want some work? Just send them to me and tell them there's a bit of coin and a lot of rum coming their way if they don't mind a bit of honest labor. Have you found us a job yet? We'll take anything, really. So there's a captain offering booze and brass for a bit of crate loading? Gods be praised, you've done it, friend. Off we go. So, Santa's, eh? All right, proper, we're finally getting a hand. Things is chaos. If you've got a favorite sheep, best to fry her up now before she gets thieved in the night like me dear plump ogget, the finest in me herd. Now that the herd's gone, old Birch is just scratching by like a hen till the next batch of beasties comes through. I recently sold most of the tender loves to a trader heading north. Plenty of business that way these days. Those miners must be preparing for a mighty great feast. Wish I could have a nibble on my dear darlings all ground and spiced. That louse! Did he even bother grilling a single luscious chop? I bet he wasted every last morsel. Captain Aureus will have a thing or two to say about this. You there! Take a seat! Prepare to laugh your head off, cry your eyes out, and teeter on the edge of your seat with an original tale from Stefan, the talking severed head. I am Reginald the Illusionist, purveyor of the most amazing artifact in Andervale. This fantastical talking head. Catch the act while you can. This show will only remain in Sicil as long as there are Legion soldiers to entertain. That's right, a talking head. And he doesn't just talk. He'll weave you a yarn so fantastic, you'll be begging to hear just one more and just one more. It's quite a story how I found him too. I obtained this curio by some rather sensational means. You see, I was diving in search of a rare medicinal sea herb. I volunteer at the local children's apothecary on weekends, in the shallows around Sicil's own black cove, when I spotted something amazing, the chest belonging to the fabled Captain Pontius. Though the chest was stuck fast, I summoned a swell of great strength and prized it free from the ancient rock. I had the treasure of a lifetime in my very hands, but then slurp, gulp. I was swallowed by an ordinary kraken that seemed to appear from nowhere. In the hubbub, I lost hold of my prize and watched it sink to the bottom of the beast's cavernous belly. Still, I feared only for a moment that all was futile. Before my mind's eye swam the faces of the many war widows and leprotic orphans who would be lost without my charitable support, I knew I had to live. Grabbing fast to the hilt of a cutlass that floated by at just that moment, I summoned all my strength to slash a great gash in the creature's gut. Freeing myself from my would-be tomb, I swam as quickly as I could, first to the surface and then to the shore. It was there, along the rocky beach, that I tripped over this talking head. Strange, isn't it? What a generous spectator! Find a seat in the front, eh? Zombie ate your dog? Orc sunk your ship? No matter! You're at Katarina's Fair, a veritable summer home for troubled minds. Won't you take a seat and let our esteemed entertainers whisk you off to a better place? Well, I'm Katarina the Fair, fairest first lady of the fair, of course. I do love making the acquaintance of my patrons, and who knows which of them might become one of my performers. I've an open stage in want of talent, and I've often found the best young performers among the rank and file of the audience. The theatre's fever has overcome you, has it? Marvellous! I do so love a fresh green talent ready to bloom. But I support players, not writers, you see. If you want to perform here, you'll have to find tried and true material. Check the library and see if any of the classics there interest you. I'd love to see a Source Hunter's take on one of the old standards. 
You there! Sit! Stay a while! Right in front! I'll excite you! I'll delight you! I'll beguile you! I'll besmile you! I'm Cedric the Sensational, and I'm... I'm... I'm playing to an empty audience! Don't pity me! No, sir! Just a few years ago, I was the all-singing, all-dancing, all-sensational darling of the town. People came from far and wide just to witness my amazing act. When Reginald came, he brought some fantastic prop with him. Now, have you seen it? A talking head! Now, I never expected a silly gimmick like that to be my main competition. It seems even my usually choosy audience has been taken in by that hack's little gizmo. I'm a man of skill, sleight of hand, feats of wit and pure entertainment. This curio is ruining what used to be an art. And even when there's no crowd to speak of, old Reggie still has at least one fan calling bravo and hee-haw. Sure as the sun sets, that one devotee attracts five more, and those five more all curious about the commotion. I don't know how he inspires such loyalty with less talent contained between his hat and his boots than I've in my crusty handkerchief. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti... Oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to prepare for the next show. Autographs will have to wait until the end. I doubt I have to tell you that I am the amazing singing Stefan, the only sentient severed head in Sicile. My audience sings my praises from Hill and Dale. Psst, you, 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 you're a source hunter, aren't you? Oh, bless the seven. Look, you've got to help me. I've been kidnapped. Um, a pleasure to meet you. Now, please, uh, Stefan has many fans to meet today. Psst, now help me. Take me to Reginald's cellar. There I will reveal everything. What are you looking at me for? There's a great show going on right in front of you. And look, there stands the world-famous Reginald the Entertainer. Better check it out if you don't want to miss the time of your life. Oh, I'm nothing but your average man taking in the best show I've ever seen. I'm amazed and astounded that for a meagre gold coin or two, I can take in this first-rate entertainment all day long. Well, I've stumbled into quite the fine gig. I'll just let my appreciation for Reggie's work be known, and he slips me a few gold coins in return. My voice happens to carry pretty far. Cyseal hears me. Cyseal wants to see what the fuss is all about. And let me tell you, this amazing show just can't be beat! Ah, a familiar face. Come, watch the show. I promise it'll take your mind off beheading baddies. Or whatever it is you do with all those muscles. I, a person whose sole job is to praise the performance and stir a crowd. A genius invention. No wonder Reginald has had such success. I knew his act couldn't have outshone mine on its merits alone. Please, you must hire him for me. Imagine the scowl on that con man's face when my rightful audience returns to me. A must-see event. What are you looking at me for? There's a great show going on right in front of you. And look. There stands the world-famous Reginald the Entertainer. Better check it out if you don't want to miss the time of your life. Well, I don't see why I should. Reginald and I have grown rather friendly, you know. And in any case, it'll be hard to pull myself away from this fantastic show. Well, I guess it's been long enough since I've stretched my wings a bit. And it ain't so far of a flight now, is it? Maybe I will have a peek at what Cedric's up to over there. One coin or two, noble spirit? One coin or two? Oh, I am a happy man, and certainly a humble one now. It turns out losing it all has its own share of benefits. Ah, a fool once was I. 
and ever seeking greater satisfaction than that which I already enjoyed. In my folly, I sought the counsel of those notorious watcher statues on the western cliffs. Their guidance ruined any small fortune I might have had, but certainly granted me humility. I'd heard they were not to be trusted, that they gave fools advice to the fools who sought them, but somehow I believed that I was the exception. They told me that I would find fame and renown if I renounced my worldly possessions, all my worldly possessions, and became a great figure of piety and humility. Fire, the most thorough cleanser, was my method. But as my house burned in front of me, I felt no elevation, no piety, only the sudden weight of my own idiocy upon my very soul. May the soul of Astarte smile upon you, kind stranger. So those statues told him he'd have to renounce his earthly possessions to become a spiritual leader, did they? Absurd. Since when is poverty a prerequisite of spirituality? Right. I'm not going to throw my things on a pyre in the hope that the stench of my burning trousers will please an ill-defined spirit. Legion's greetings. I have been informed about your heroics on the beach. Were that I had been there to partake in the battle. But my duties lie here. Sworn as I am to protect Lady Esmeralda from the rabble that would enforce summary justice on her. Even though she is, until proven guilty, wholly innocent. I am Septimus, seventh son in a household of nine, legionnaires all. Me and two brothers of mine were assigned to Cecile from day one. Alas, both of them have long since fallen in battle against the dead. But never shall I lose heart. Long as a single legionnaire stands, all of us remain undefeated in the eyes of the gods. So fair a lady I have seldom seen in all of Rivalon, my friend. And I have traveled more extensively than migratory birds do. She stands accused of murder. But in my mind, her presumed guilt is a fallacy, and indeed a fabrication. Steadfast will I guard her. Never will I waver unless absolute proof of her culpability should be brought before me. And I hold no such proof exists. Jake's murder is, in a word, a tragedy. He was well loved in all of Cecile. The Council of Seven couldn't have wished for a better ambassador. That he of all people should have braved the undead siege for so long, only to be felled by foul sorcery, is heartrending. And what questions are those? This place is practically a tomb. And these Sicilians are constantly crying for our attention. There's a zombie in my garden, an orc at my baby. My sheep, my sheep is gone, oh woe is me. It never ends. I'll be grateful when our reinforcements finally arrive. Maybe they'll manage to muster the will to care. I've fought orcs crazed with blood liquor. Withstood assaults by ogres wielding clubs made of human bones and teeth. Aye. I've braved the poisonous spear tips of goblins aplenty. But never did I know fear until I faced the undead. Not a pleasant thing for a legionnaire to feel fear, but there you have it nonetheless. Lords above, grant me patience. You're a source hunter, aren't you? Here because you think I killed my husband. How many times do I need to state and restate my complete innocence in the matter? I am Esmeralda, wife of Jake, and now, alas, his widow. Poor man. We were both so young when we married. He so rich and I so poor, but his one and only princess just the same. Starstone? I've never heard of such a thing. Dear Jake had a mineral collection, yes. As far as I knew, it was one of his pastimes, nothing more. Do you mean to imply he collected something dangerous? Something that may have gotten him into trouble? Oh, this is all too much. I feel like I'm drifting from nightmare into nightmare. Like I told just about every legionnaire in town, I don't know anything about poor Jake's murder. I want his killer found and tried, 
But everyone suspects me of this evil deed. And you're no different, are you? So what happened? Some of them tittle-tattling crab chasers down the pub call me a murderous gold digger and you believe them? These insinuations truly go beyond the pale. Oh, I think I'm getting one of my headaches. The hunter returns. I hope you are here to shop rather than sleuth. Listen, if you're going to accuse me of something, you would better find the evidence to back up your ridiculous claims. Perhaps it is you who should explain your presence in my cellar. And the dagger? It's simply a butcher knife used by my late husband to cut meat. He did so love to cook the deer. What will you think of next? Accusing me of bashing him over the head with a frying pan? Oh, that horrid tome of ill repute. It isn't mine, it was Jake's. He was a politician, don't you see? Always on the lookout for plotting rivals. Always trying to be one step ahead. Really, I should have thought a source hunter of all people would appreciate my dear husband's sense for survival. Oh, don't put stock in the hastily scribbled words of a lovelorn fool. This letter, it was a show of passion. A poorly worded passion I did not echo in the least. The Duke, he's like a spoiled child. He's not a man. He's not like Septimus. But all of it is circumstantial. I've a perfectly logical explanation for every piece of so-called evidence against me, and yet you've been trailing me like a bloodhound. People seem to want to believe I am guilty. So let me tell you something I've been keeping to myself. Perhaps it may yet lead to the true culprit. Over the last few months, Jake grew distant. Distant and dark, somehow. Something in him changed. I can't quite put my finger on it, but he was no longer the gentle man he used to be. In fact, he scared me. It all began the day he met Evelyn, Master Thelirum's apprentice. She healed him of what we all believe to be a fatal wound he suffered hunting boars. I think he became obsessed by her, or obsessed by the secrets I just know she holds. Talk to this woman. There is more to her than meets the eye. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if she belongs to that sect. You know, to those who worship a goddess without name and practice rituals of blood. I never liked her from the moment I met her. Men cannot see past her beauty, but I have gazed her in the eye and it was death that leered back at me. She hails from Silver Glen, a village in the forest north of Sysil. How she made it past the undead without a legion escort, I'll never know. Though I can hazard an eerie guess. If anyone killed my Jake, it must be her. She had her claws in him for many long months, and finally she must have cut too deeply. Ah, <laughs> you have come. Yes, <laughs> that is most satisfactory. <laughs> be gone, a brittle mask of age. Hear me now, repeat the words of Brittletooth, the child snatcher of Carador. Come, play with me, for I'm hungry. Come, play, play, play. The game, yes. A game of blood and brutality, of death and dexterity. <laughs> Fun as herring the horror Harlequin. But like the serpentine stalker, this is before the stab. Hush now. Darkness, darling. Hush. Hush. And listen to my tale. The elves of Gandavon, they lived in peace. Oh, yes. But one night, when the moon had hid her face, the orcs of the tribe of Kazuldagar beset our city. They cooked and ate and burned every last one of us. The light of dawn never saw an elf of Gandavum no more. All undone, every last one of us. Except for me, the midnight rambler, away from the city. I was very old back then already, though indeed I whisper of many years hence. But death shall not find me. Oh no, not until every beast of Kazaldegard has been bled. I may be frail, 
a withered grey. But the wealth of kings is mine. Countless assassins have ministered to the vengeance that is my want, and now is almost over. By Kala, lady of the last gaze, I swear it is almost done. Only the very last one of the Khazal de Gar still eludes me. The crowning kill that would seal its fate and mine alike. I have tracked her down. By the curse of the spine spear I have. She does not know her ill-shapen son is setting fast. Color the dusk red, O oh sword of youth. Bloody the day with the bramble sap that runs through the veins of Victoria. Bring me the amulet that clings to her flesh, soon to fade. <laughs> and yours shall be the bounty of vindication. Mine shall be its sanguine satisfaction after long, long last. Yes, Victoria. She is the one whose heart must be held in hand, the heart around which the fingers of that hand must clench and tighten until its choking flesh bulges with blood and its beat slowly breaks. The orcs of Gazultica, they knew my name, oh yes, by the bite of the roving rattler, they knew my design, and so they sought to save their last, an infant, she who was to be queen, to no avail, oh no, years, how many I know not, years I, I searched, and now she has been found. Her name is that of a woman, her employment that of a civilized being. But by the fork of Barbara Maneater, she is nothing but an orc, a cyst of nature, one of a misbegotten litter dragged into life from the tumid womb of a filthy, coarse-haired beast that was humped like a dog in the darkness of a stinking hollow. Victoria. Librarian, <laughs> daughter, <laughs> adopted child of Cecil, mayor of Sicile. There is bloodlust in you. I can feel it. Let it out. Set it free. Undo the last of the Kazoldegar. By the breasts of Sishara, goat sucker, give me my revenge! My name is Eglandir Twilselanar. Elf of the house of Gandavum, the slaughtered house of Gandavum. But by the twin blades of the Shadow Vixen, I shall have my revenge. The walls of memory are stained with blood, and I would see them bloodier still. That was quite the radical change we witnessed. I never would have thought that the benign old man we met outside would turn out to be a vengeance-driven aficionado of assassins. He is as much a savage as those orcs. And how is Victoria guilty of her tribe's crime if she was but a babe at the time? Indeed, Victoria probably doesn't even know about her past. And yet she's on a... Let's call him eccentrics hit list. Tuz Jageta, friend. Kiral is sore. Oh, do pardon my language, my friend. But that is quite the startling revelation. So much sadness, so much anguish. Eglandir's tale is heartrending, though it seems that in the pursuit of retribution, he has himself become as great a ghoul as those that wronged him. Does he not see that I am now the one who is to be wronged? Why, oh why must he make me, of all gentle-minded and life-loving creatures, why must he make me the target of his imperishable hate? Whom have I ever harmed? I live for books, not brutality. So, let us approach the situation with reason and ask ourselves, where do we go from here? Though, first let me say this. From my heart, I thank you for warning me. I thank you and I trust you. So pray, let me pose the question. What do you advise we should do? Leg fizoda! Yes, a capital notion. Let him be brought before the law for his schemes. 
I am an innocent, and Eglind here would see me dead. That is a grave offence, is it not? It would probably be better if you rather than I informed Captain Aureus, though. He bears little goodwill toward me ever since my more savage brethren have been marauding the beaches and killing his legionnaires. Ah, the Source Hunter. Oh, joyous hour. Yes? Discovered anything? Well, have you found any incriminating evidence against her? If so, let's have it. So, you found a blooded knife in Esmeralda's cellar. Guess you can scratch the top candidate off your list of cliched clues, then. Not exactly enough to arrest her for, is it? How to plan the perfect murder. Really? Really? She might as well wear a dress with the words, I killed Jake and I liked it, embroidered on it. But that alone wouldn't suffice to convince me. So convince me, Hunter, and keep looking. Hmm, the knife, the book, the letter. They seem harmless enough by themselves, but in conjunction they do paint a pretty grim picture. Fine then. If you are certain she did it, then I shall have Esmeralda arrested. Your responsibility, Source Hunter. Surely you have exhausted all the evidence that was to be found. No! A good bloodhound knows when the trail has gone cold. So be a good dog now, won't you? It was stolen? Gods, what a fool that Roberts is! Taking a bribe in beleaguered old Sysiel. Ah, what was he going to do with that gold? By the largest kipper in the land? He has a lot to answer for, but not as much as the one that did the bribing in the first place. Guess your mission is pretty clear, isn't it? Off you go to find this munificent body snatcher. She vanished into thin air, did she? Could she be behind this rotten business after all? Track her down, will you? That girl has some explaining to do. Whom would you have the Legion arrest? The Elf! What in the name of Ahu's arse should I arrest him for? He wants us to kill Victoria. It's true. He is a dangerous lunatic and needs to be incarcerated. So, he wants you to kill that savage the mayor calls his daughter, does he? Hardly seems a crime to do so. But I guess I cannot allow assassinations to take place. I won't arrest him unless I have some actual evidence, though. Or did you think I'd simply take your word for fact? <laughs> As I suspected. To what do I owe the repeated pleasure, Source Hunter? Far be it from her to tell her master what in the Seven's name she's up to. The girl flew from here like she just heard the location of the Philosopher's Stone. She even left her pouch unattended in the next room. Most unlike her, to be sure. She usually keeps it within sight at all times. Very strange she'd leave it behind. It's in the next room if you'd like to take a look. I'd try her house, for starters. It's not far from here. I'll mark the location on your map. Oh, thank the Seven. Lucia, it's the Source Hunter. We're not gonna die on this haunted cliff after all. Who's dying? We're just resting up. The calm before the storm. Those ghosties at the lighthouse won't know what hit them. There's certainly something fishy happening. The light shines sure as the tides. Though there's not been an attendant there for nearly two decades. Our platoon made a pact with Selenia. We'd check out the lighthouse, and if we made it back, we'd get a ticket home. What Selenia failed to mention was that it wasn't just the ghosts at the lighthouse we had to worry about, it was every savage skeleton on the way there and back too. When we started, we were seven. Now, Lucia and I are the last alive. Survival of the fittest, I say. We're just here marshalling our strength before hauling into that lighthouse with our swords blazing. Ha! Marshalling our strength indeed. To be honest, we've been shaking like chihuahuas praying for a way out of this mess, and it seems the Seven have sent you. Ah, Malleus, your dignity's in a puddle at your feet. 
As for me, an honourable soldier and servant to Rivalon, I'm not afraid to... ask nicely. So, what do you say, Source Hunter? Will you check out the lighthouse in the name of your comrades in arms? If Selenia sees the place cleared, we'll be on the next ship out of Sicile and back to our families. You'll go to the lighthouse and straighten matters out, yes? Let us know what you find. What's this? Living eyes that can see the shape of death? Avert your gaze, wanderer, for you are looking upon the phantom of a murderer. Samson was my name a long time ago. I know not why upon my death I became a ghost, doomed to haunt this tower. Perhaps the gods heard of my crime and stripped me of my rightful place in their eternal realm. If so, their punishment was just. Each night I wake the flame in the lighthouse to repent for my wretched sin. That indeed is the tainted title I must bear, and deservedly so. For fifteen years ago to the day, it was that I sat atop my lighthouse, the flame unlit, and watched on as a pitiable ship crashed upon the cliff and got devoured by greedy waves. Deliberately had I foregone to do my duty. Willfully did I condemn every soul aboard to a salty sleep on the bed of an indifferent sea. Why did I commit this act of blackest horror? Jealousy, anger, the bitter anguish of a broken heart. Those are the ancient ills that drove me to madness. Desdemona was on board, as I knew she would be. My wife, the delicate beauty of whom I was sure, was betraying me with her friend, the dashing Falada. Possessed as I was by the demons of envy, ire, and torment, I decided that if I had her love no longer, only death could take her for his mistress. And so I sat here, coldly and calmly, as I delivered them both unto the deep. Yet no sooner had the water closed its spuming jaws around the perishing vessel below, that the extent of my offense dawned on my beleaguered mind. Overcome with guilt, I sought escape through the hangman's noose, but rest was not to come. Skeletons roamed the lands, restless as my troubled soul, but shall not find their lair here. Some scuttle by now and again, but most of the time I reside here in solitude. Solitude and silence. Quite a story that ghost had to tell. Not every day one hears about a lighthouse keeper sinking ships just because his wife proved to be unfaithful. Aye, a pitiful creature. Torn up so badly by the loss of love that it led him to commit murder. I almost feel sorry for him. Yes, I understand. Despite his heinous act, one can't but commiserate with his plight. Nothing more bitter than love undone. How did it go? Don't spare any details, we need to make a full report to the Lieutenant. Now that's an interesting story. Clean the grip from your ears, and I'll tell you all about it. Indeed. Now there's a story worthy of an audience. So, let me get this straight. There's a ghost inside, operating the lighthouse, and you managed to do away with the bad beasties at the base of the thing. Whew, sounds like a job well done. And I'm sure Selenia will be thrilled to hear we did it. Another triumph for Legion Daring Do. And if this doesn't buy us a ticket home, nothing will. I need a moment to reflect. It does feel quite good to give of oneself to those in need. Those as giving as you are rare and exquisite as rubies. What a pleasure to behold you. That's quite the valuable gift. Only the best for my favorite partner. Your kindness is a great comfort to me. I'll return this favor at the earliest possible moment. 
According to his diary, this bloke couldn't put down his dogs even after he knew them to be infected. Who could bear to harm his best friends? Especially when they only showed signs, but no symptoms of turning. They are only innocent beasts, after all, and appear to pose no threat of harm. Mercy me! It walks! But it's not dead! I wasn't entirely certain I'd ever meet anyone any more fitting that description. The name's Wolfram, and it's a delight to make your acquaintance. Good to see, by the by, you don't belong to the Legion. Ten of their number accompanied me on a fact-finding mission to an ancient burial mound. But, as it turns out, they stood a snowflake's chance in hell against the undead. Not that I reckon my chance is any higher, though, especially with that vicious undead mutt prowling the grounds around this here ruin. I'd go so far as to say I'm in dire need of an armed escort back to the city, as a matter of fact. I'm an archaeologist and connoisseur of the undead. Because of my expertise, Lieutenant Selenia, a commander of the Legion in Sicile, wanted me to investigate the ancient burial mound just outside of town hoping to uncover the source of the zombie plague. No such luck, though. Quite so. I live for the dead, so to speak. The combination of archaeology and a case of incidental necromantic magic is what sparked my interest in the field. Of course, I'll be glad to share what knowledge I have obtained over the years. Zombies are the results of vile necromancy in action. Among the resurrected dead, there are those who used to be wizards, and they can cast spells still. They slay their prey and bring them back as deathless thralls that fester with the diseases of decay. Should you encounter these menaces, always try to pick them off from afar. Don't let them get close, or they'll riddle you with the poisons and the blight that afflict them. These ones in particular... The ones around Sicile are the resurrected soldiers of Bracchus, the last and most infamous in the line of Sorcerer Kings. He himself is supposed to be buried somewhere around here, but no one knows where the actual grave is. Long have I searched and deep have I dug, but so far I haven't found anything more spectacular than rusted weaponry and shards of pottery. Be that as it may, Bracchus's soldiers stalk these lands anew and they still fight like veterans. I told those fools of legionnaires to bring maces instead of swords. You know, weapons that crush these skeleton bones, not blades that may ricochet right off. Hell, even a sturdy branch would do the job better. But they didn't listen, and now they're dead. Oh, and don't be surprised if the dead use an unusual amount of magic against you. These soldiers were loyal to a sorcerer king, after all. Dark magic all around. I'll never make it back to Sicile alone. But you've gotten this far. You can bring me back, can't you? We certainly can. Let's be off. Indeed. Don't you worry. We'll keep you safe. Marvelous. Mighty fine of you. Lead the way, I say. You did it. We made it. Oh, cheers for escorting me to safety. You're a godsend, you are. I'll be in the King Crab, clearing the dust from my throat. The drinks are on me if you'd like to partake. 